Hi guys. So today you are going to be learning about the Trail of Tears and its relation to Alabama. So let me turn my tools on here and we will get started. Get my pointer ready. The goals for our class today and the standards are listed here. Our goals are for you to be able to describe what the Trail of Tears is and then also for you to be able to analyze the effect that the Indian Removal Act had on Native Americans here in Alabama. Here's our standard that we're going to be focusing on. It's the second history standard. Relate reasons for European exploration and settlement in Alabama to the impact of European explorers on trade, health, and land expansion in Alabama. All right, the first thing that we are going to look at is something called the Indian Removal Act of 1830. So we're going to watch a short video on this, but before we do, here's what that looks like over here to the left. This is a little snippet out of the actual Indian Removal Act. This was signed on May 30th of 1830 by a man named Andrew Jackson that we're going to be learning a little bit more about and he was the president at that time. The Indian Removal Act is the act basically that President Andrew Jackson would enforce to make all of these Indian tribes move from their homelands, take the Trail of Tears, to what is present day Oklahoma. So basically the Indians were here before anyone, right? They were in Alabama before any other people were here. So it was their homeland. Well, then we had the whites coming in and they knew that this land, um, it grew crops really well. There was gold found nearby. So the whites wanted that land. Well, the Indian Removal Act allowed President Andrew Jackson and his troops to forcibly take this land from our Indians and make them move, basically. So here is a map of what that looks like. You can see Alabama right here. He, the brown spots on this map are uh, were those Indian lands. So you can see over on the left right here, you have the Chickasaw and Choctaw in what is present day Mississippi and a little bit of Alabama right there. And then the Native American tribe that was mostly in Alabama are the Creeks and you can see them right here. Then into Georgia and Tennessee and a little bit of Alabama are the Cherokee. And then if you go way down here into Florida, those were the Seminoles that he mentioned in that video. And if you look at the arrows here, those were the paths that each of the tribes took um, on the Trail of Tears when they were forced out of their homelands. So that brings us to the Trail of Tears. So briefly in the video, he talked about it, but we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper. Um, here's that same map. And like I said, these lines, uh, they're a uh, maroon color, are showing us where the Indians traveled through to get to where they were forced to, to live. And that is Oklahoma or what is now Oklahoma. It wasn't at the time. So these Indians were forced to move out of their homes and took different paths all to get to what is present day Oklahoma. So if you look over here, the Trail of Tears was a path that Native Americans took to move to new land west of the Mississippi River. So Mississippi is right here, the state of Mississippi. There is a long river that goes through Mississippi and the white men and President um, Andrew Jackson wanted all of these Indians on the west over here of that river in Mississippi. And um, that was enforced by that Indian Removal Act of 1830. So these Native Americans were not even allowed time to gather their belongings. And as they left, the whites looted their homes. Um, then they began the march known as the Trail of Tears. During their march, from their homelands to this new land that they're being forced to move to. Um, at least 4,000 Native Americans died of either cold, hunger, um, or disease on their, way, on their way to those new lands. So we lost a lot of Native Americans 
to this Trail of Tears, which is why it's called the Trail of Tears, because so many people died there. So just a few things. I wanted some, some key points for you guys to remember. Um, this fella here is Andrew Jackson, and he is the president that went against the Supreme Court ruling and forced those Native Americans out of their homelands and into the West. So that was President Andrew Jackson. Um, the second thing to note is the specific tribes that we're talking about here. So during that time, there were different tribes all over the United States, but we're focusing on these five. So the Native American tribes in the Southeast did not want to move. So they were the tribes that um, put up a fight against the white men. These tribes include the Chickasaw, the Creek, the Choctaw, the Cherokee, and the Seminole. And a good way to remember that is all of them start with a C, except for Seminole. And the Seminole were a little bit further away from us. They were down in Florida. Um, so just remember that all five of them start with a C, except for Seminole. And then the last thing um, that I wanted to highlight here was that Trail of Tears that we talked about. And the Trail of Tears was the route that Native Americans took and ended up being called the Trail of Tears because so many Native Americans died on it. And there's just kind of a picture to show you what that may have looked like. You can see one of the white soldiers here just basically enforcing that they kept that they kept on moving and watching out, um, making sure everything was going right. So that was the Trail of Tears. Some historical places in Alabama um, there are a ton of them, and a quick Google search will give you a pretty good idea of just how many, um, how rich our soil is with Native American history. But for today, I wanted to focus on something called the Battle of Burnt Corn Creek. So you should have learned about this in your last video with Miss Bethune. And the Battle of Burnt Corn Creek um, is often cited as the very first real battle of the Creek War in 1813 through 14, and this took place on July 27th of 1813 at a bend in Burnt Corn Creek. So if you look over here at our map of Alabama, where we live, um, Burnt Corn is right here in Monroe County, I believe. Let me see. Yes, right there, teeny weeny, you can see burnt corn. So this arrow here is po pointing to where that is located in our state, and that is the Battle of Burnt Corn Creek. The second thing we're going to look at is something called Moundville. Um, Moundville was a carefully designed place in which the upper class Native Americans lived in wood homes, on the flat tops of the mounds overlooking a central plaza while the lower classes lived in thatch huts below. So that is gonna be located right here. Um, it's kind of on the border between Tuscaloosa and Hale counties. Um, but if you look right here, very small, it says Moundville. And Indians would build this thing called a mound. And it was basically, if you had flat ground here, then you would mound up dirt and maybe be six six to ten feet higher on a higher level of ground than the rest of everyone else so they would build these mounds and then build their houses and things on top of there um, and moundville has an ar archaeology museum i believe there um, so that could be something cool for you guys that live in this area to check out and then the last thing we're going to talk about is something called Fort Mims. Um, this is the place that one of the most brutal massacres in American history took place at. So it's called Fort Mims. During the Creek Indian War, the Creeks led by Red Eagle that Miss Bethune talked about, they took the fort, killing all but about 36 of some 550 that were inside the fort. And if you look right here at this third arrow, it is in Mobile County, I believe. Um, Fort Mims is down here. If you look, it's in a city called Stockton. And that is where this arrow is pointing. So these are the ones that I chose are more in the southwest of Alabama. But there are tons of Native American sites all over our state. 
and especially it's really rich up here in the top part of our state. So just do some quick Google searches for Native American sites around the city that you live in and you may you may find that some are pretty close to you. So here's a quick timeline of the events. Andrew Jackson was elected the seventh president of our United States in 1828. Then in 1830, that Indian Removal Act was signed by him. And then here is where it begins the removal of all those Indians. Uh, or all those Native Americans. In 1831, the Choctaw had to move. 1834, the Creek moved. 1837, the Chickasaw moved. And 1838, the Cherokee people moved. So you may be wondering, well, where are the Seminoles? I thought they also had to move. They did, but the Seminoles, unlike the other tribes, they really fought back against the white settlers and our president during that time. So it wasn't until way later that the Seminoles actually moved. And just to wrap up, we're...